So the first thing I want to do is to bring in the server repo because with this repository, we can actually do all the things that we need to do in the implementation, as you can see here. So I'm going to go up here and then I'm going to define a private field. So I'm going to say private final and then I'm going to name it server repo and then give it the same name server repo. And I'm going to bring in an annotation here. So I'm going to go up and then do at required arcs constructor. So because I have this required arcs constructor, Lombok is going to create a constructor and then it's going to put this field inside of the constructor and it's going to be our dependency injection. So instead of creating the constructor ourselves, Lombok is going to do it for us with this annotation. And we also need to make this a service. So I'm going to say service and also I need to bring in the transactional. So I'm going to do transactional. And lastly, I need to bring in the log. So I'm going to do at S L F or J. So this is going to allow us to have something printed in the console so that we can see exactly what's happening. So at this point, we're ready to implement those methods. So let's go ahead and start working on those. I'm going to put a space here and I'm going to scroll up a little. And what I want to do in the create is to log. So I'm going to go ahead and do log that info and we're going to pass in a message. So I'm going to say saving new server. And then let's say we want to show the name of the server. So I'm going to do open and close curly braces and then put a comma and then try to get the name of the server. So I'm going to do server that get name. So that's going to give us a log in the console that's going to say saving server and then pass in the name of the server. The next thing I want to do is to create an image for the server. So I'm going to do server that set image URL that ID. And then let's say I'm going to create a method and uh, let's call it set image. Uh, let's do set server image URL and it's not going to take any parameters. So let's go ahead and see if we can define this function. All right, so we're going to create this and for now, let's make it return uh, like null, for example, just so that we don't get an error. But I'm going to also move this to the bottom and then we're going to work on it later. So I'm going to paste it here just like that. So we're going to come back to this and then we're going to work on it because we need to set an image URL for every server that we save. And then after I set the image URL, I can go ahead and save the server. So I'm going to go here, call the server repo. So we're going to say server repo. And then because we extend the JPA repository, we have this save, which is pretty much how we save something in the database. And then here we're going to pass it the server. So whenever we were using this method to create a server, it's going to log something into the console, set the image of the server because we're not going to ask the user for an image. And then we're going to save the server in the database and also return that server. So let's go ahead and work on the second method. So for the ping, that's going to be a little bit interesting. I'm going to go ahead and copy the log and paste it here. And we want to say something else. So let's say pinging server and let's pass in the IP. So we're going to say pinging server IP and then pass in the IP address. So we're going to say IP address. So we're going to have something in the log that's going to say pinging server IP and then it's going to show us the IP address of the server. Now, remember, at this point, we don't have the server that the user is trying to ping. We only have the IP address. And let's go ahead and see if we can find that server. So we're going to find the server. We're going to name it server and then call the server repo that find by IP address and then give it the IP address. So just going to go into the database select the server by that IP address. So what we have to do now is to try to ping the server. So to do this, we're going to do inet address. Let's call this address and then do inet address again, get by name, and then we're going to give it the IP address. So we're going to say IP address. So this is going to give us the inet address. And then once we have that inet address, we can check to see if the server is reachable and we can do server that set status. So set status and then take the address and see if it's reachable. So we're going to say is reachable. And then let's say we're going to give it 10,000. And after this timeout, if we can't reach the server, then the code is going to continue its course. And then here I'm going to put a question mark and then I'm going to say server up and let's see if we can do a static import for this. Otherwise, we're going to set the status to be server down. So I'm going to go up here, put a column, and then we're going to say server down. So what are we doing here? So we're getting the inet address for that specific IP address, and then we're going to set the status of the server. So what I'm doing here is just checking to see if we can reach the server within this timeout. So if we can reach the server within this timeout, then I'm going to set the status to server up because I know the server is up. Otherwise, the server is going to be down. So since we edit the status of the server, then we have to save the server in a database with the new status. So I'm going to call the server repo, call save again, pass in the server. And then lastly, 
we're going to return that server. So then we're going to say return server and we're getting an error because this is supposed to uh, throw an exception. So we're just going to add it to the uh, method signature just like that. So you can see how this is making sense. And I'm going to show you another slash better way to try to ping a server. But this is reachable. It's going to work fine. After I've finished adding all of the implementations for all these methods, I'm going to create another method that you can use if you really want to try to reach a server using the um, you know java.net package. They have really nice features and methods and things that you can use to see if you can establish a connection with a remote server. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But for now, this is going to work for us. This is reachable is going to work for us at this point.